Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be doing part 14 of what if Naruto was Madara grandson. The like go for this one is going to be over 215. Get this one to over 215 likes and you'll be getting part 15 as soon as possible. And go check out my other what if that I did. What if Naruto was taken by Raikage part 4. Go and check that out. It's going to be right under this. Okay, so comment as much as you can down below. Tell me what you think of this episode. And if you're a new subscriber, comment and tell me. I'll be replying to all of you. So, without further ado, let's get straight into what if. Start the intro. So basically last time we left off they finished the mission with the bridge building and everything they came back to the village and Iruka was in arguing with Kakashi told him that the kids weren't ready for the junior exam but Iruka decided to do a test on Naruto and see if he's ready after Naruto got Iruka kidnapped by all of the Anbu the Turkage said this was successfully passed and Naruto and all his other peers could participate in the junior exam here is where we start this Danzo entered the hidden room in one of the third Okage's office where no one knows about to expect him and his root ninjas. The third Okage has ordered Danzo to disband the root ninjas because of the hard training that they had to join it and some of them were killed. But because the third Okage told him to do it, that doesn't mean that he here. The organization had too much advantage hidden in the shadows to be broken down by the third okage and dismantled so danzo kept on with it while the hokage job were for publicity and border disputes and public problems danzo job was to take care of the destruction in the hidden shadows like the shadows he can use his root ninjas to go and take care of the destruction and the problem on his terms and they are completely rootless Dimly lit hall rooms held to led to all sorts of rooms in the complex with members either training or waiting for mission updates. The environment Danzo had supply is ninjas with mean that like they have completely shut off their emotions so they are completely like tools. They have no sort of emotion in them and they will willingly give their life for the good of the leaf in mere seconds. In Danzo's opinion, emotion led to war, pain, and hatred. So he wanted ninjas without emotions. For some reason, most people do not see the logic in his ideas, but that wasn't important to him. The Roots, despite their small size, small amount of members, they did their job quite perfectly, and that leave Danzo satisfied. Danzo reached his wooden office door, opened it, and went down the sat in a chair behind his metal desk. He opened the latest copy of the bingo book and looked at page 399. That was Naruto number, who thought that Naruto Uzumaki Academy Dead Last would got in the bingo book. At least, he isn't completely useless as I thought about him. Judging by the bingo book, he is easy at a tuning level. As for this unknown Ochiya boy, I will send my best roots on Vu to find out more about him and gather information. But if he is really related to Madara, if he is, then who is that masked man I met before the Ochiya massacred? Skipping to Naruto, Naruto raised an eyebrow when Konohamaru ran past him that Sakura was chasing after him, a furious Sakura. He wondered what the kid did or said to her to make her angry like that. Yuden and Moji were following the two. Naruto shrugged it off and he continued his walk 
only to stop dead in his track when he felt a demonic chakra near beside him. Then he saw Konohamaru bumped in a sand ninja. But it wasn't the one he bumped into. Then Naruto looked up on the tree and saw a sand ninja staring at him. His eyes were completely cold. The two of them gazed and stared at each other. Then the silence was broken when Konohamaru yelled out when Kankuro grabbed onto him. Let me go. Konohamaru struggled in the air as Kankuro lifted him up. How dare you bump me, you little brat. I'll teach you a lesson. Please, just give him back. Sakura pleaded. She's worrying about Konohamaru. She didn't like the kid, but that didn't mean she wanted him beaten. She would be screwed if she just stand there and watch the third Okage grandson get beaten before her eyes. Yes, let Konohamaru go. You then shouted as Moji beside him decided to spoke up too. But the ninja that's holding Konohamaru only sneered at two of them. They didn't really appear in paying them much attention. Wow Konohamaru, two kidnappers in one day, Naruto said. Boss, help me, the younger boy shouted in relief. He's glad to see that Naruto is here. The sand ninja looked at Naruto and said, you want him? He said, he said this in a challenging way, like he was prepared to fight Naruto. Kankuro, stop it, just give him back, we do not want any trouble. His teammate, a blonde Kunochi, found, she frowned at the situation. She didn't like what was going on, because this will only start a war. But, Kankuro decided to ignore her. Naruto then answered the question that Kankuro asked him, do you want him back? Naruto said nope. Konohamaru sighed and he looked down because he thought that Naruto was here to save him. Naruto then said okay I will give you some information to make you see what kind of trouble you are in. The last time somebody kidnapped that boy you are holding, the Anvu captured him and interrogated him. Very deadly consequences, Naruto said in an evil tone. Kankuro was hesitant for a moment before looking back at Naruto and said you're lying. I'm not. Unless you want a war to break out between the leaf and sand, you should let the third Okage grandson go. Hearing that the boy was the third Okage grandson, Kankuro dropped him. He was in shock so he dropped the boy immediately. He almost ruined the mission. They couldn't be caught before entering the goddamn tuning exam. And Kankuro was just about to spoil up everything by hurting the third Okage grandson. So he knew what he had to do, he dropped Konohamaru and he was thinking to himself. Konohamaru dropped on the ground and get up quickly as he can and he sent a huge kick towards Kankuro's leg. Kankuro didn't expect it so he just yelled out in pain after receiving that huge kick. Konohamaru stuck out his tongue and ran behind Naruto. Seeking his protection from Kankuro, suddenly a flying rock was thrown into the sand ninja's head. In, he looked up and looking for the source of what just happened. A younger black haired shinobi who was wearing a cocky smile on his face looking down at Kankuro. Late timing, Naruto thought to himself. Sakura cheered when she saw Sasuke came to rescue them. Everyone turned to face Sasuke. They thought that he was here to attack them and defend Konohamaru. But then, everyone hear a mysterious voice came from one of behind the trees. Kankuro, you are shaming our village. Kankuro just shouted Gara's name. He was startled when he saw the look that Gara was giving him. Gara was standing upside down the tree branch. Naruto was the only one that saw him. Yeah, Naruto was the only one that saw him first because him and Naruto was exchanging glance. As Naruto appeared there, Naruto felt the strong demonic chakra. Because of the one tail, Gara then looked at Tankuro and said, Even if you are my older brother and you shame our village, I won't hesitate to kill you. Then, he just mumbled like disintegrate in the pure sand and then he appeared in the middle of the two of them on the ground he used a jutsu 
Naruto looked over there and saw the girl trying to calm down the both of them because she didn't want both of them to get in any fight or anything. And Naruto said, is both of them seriously brothers? Naruto thought to himself as he stared at Tankro, then he looked at Gara. They don't they don't even have any features or look anything alike to me. Maybe because of the face paint, though the redhead looked like a panda. Naruto looked towards Gara's stomach and felt the same demonic chakra. The Jinjuliki of the One Tail. He smiled. Tonuki. The Sand Trio quickly turned their heads towards Naruto when they heard that name. They thought they were hearing things, but they turned and saw the blonde ninja smirking at them. Naruto chuckled. I never thought that I will find another Jinjuliki in here of all places. He looked at Gara. Perhaps this exam won't be such a waste after all. Jinjuliki? Some of them like the kids around them thought because they do not know what that means. You. Gara's eyes narrowed. How does he know that? Gara focused on Naruto and wanted to figure out how the hell that Naruto know that he's a Jinjuliki. My name is Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto made the mocking bow. Nice to meet you, Tanuki. Naruto whispered the last one, so only Gara could hear it. Much to his sibling's surprise, Gara's eyes usually has hate inside of them, but for the first time, they saw his eyes with pure shock. Naruto chuckled to see Gara so surprised, and he dissolved in about a hundred black butterflies. Cool, the rest of the children thought. And Tankura cried out, Who is he? Konohamaru and his next friends looked around them nervously as they looked at the three sand ninjas and they decided to follow Sakura because it's better than going off with the sand ninjas and getting beaten up. And Konohamaru knew that he was the match for that big guy, Konkuro, so they headed off with Sakura. Team 7 was scattered around their meeting bridge. Kakashi had sent out a call for all of them to meet him, but now he has broken his record of being late because he was the one who called him and told him to meet him and now he was about 2 hours late. Sakura was trying to talk to Sasuke but he was ignoring her as usual. While Naruto was sitting on a stump quietly meditating. Sakura was getting angry and angrier by the minutes pass till you can physically see the vein burst into her skull, you can physically see it. And then you heard something behind them like an, when a shadow clone expelled itself and it was Kakashi. He came there suddenly behind them and Sakura was right beside Sasuke so she screamed and said Kakashi sensei you are late but she was screaming into Sasuke ears and he nearly go deaf. While Sasuke was rubbing his ears, trying to get his earring back, Kakashi make one of his usual excuses. They all noticed that Naruto hadn't moved from his spot. Even though Kakashi suddenly appeared, he didn't even flinch. Sakura went up to him, getting ready to hit him, but she remembered that he wasn't the same Naruto who he, she used to knew because he wasn't that playful or anything again. He was just so serious. Instead, she chose to scream at him. When she didn't get any reaction, she decided to poke him. Naruto opened his eyes and looked at her with a lazy expression in his face. Did you say something, Haruno? She just get mad and walked away. Kakashi decided to get them all attention. This is sudden, but I've nominated all of you for the tuning exam. Here are your applications. He handed them each a form. I cannot force you to take the exam. This is just a nomination. Whether you take the exam or feel ready, it's up to you. Those who wish to take the exam should sign these papers and return them at room 301 by 4 o'clock in 3 days. That is all he said and then use a body flicker jutsu to disappear again without giving them any more information. Sakura got even up madder. She had to wait around so long for a piece of paper. 
Three days later, Naruto materialized out of a swarm of black butterflies. In front of the academy gate, he sees Sasuke and Sakura standing by the gate waiting. He walks towards the two of them and asks them, are you ready? Sasuke nodded, but Sakura seemed a little bit jumpy like she's not sure, but she headed off with the three of them. Three of them are walking in their team right now, Team 7. They all headed to the room, 301. They arrive and Naruto took notice of all of the people in the academy. There are lots of contestants in here because the place is pretty much full. Naruto then smirked and thought to himself, do these people think I'm an idiot? Because this was all a genjutsu. He was just on the second floor. He didn't even reach to room 301 yet. And this is not the place. It was just disguised to look like this. And then he heard someone get knocked down. Naruto saw the crowd parted because it wasn't real people, just genjutsu. And Naruto saw the person that was there. It was Rock Lee. He was getting knocked down by two brown haired ninjas. The both of them look at Rock Lee and said, You plan to take a Chuni exam? You should just go sit down. You're just a little kid. Yeah, yeah. Their partner said, agreeing with the both of them because it was three of them. It was the sh Shinobis from the Hidden Sound in San. Yeah, those one that come here, yeah, the Sound Village. The one that came to attack doing the tuning exam, those three guys that Sasuke destroyed in the original. Yeah, it was those guys with all the white bandages and everything. After Lee get pushed down on the ground, Ten Ten walk up and said, please let us through. One of the other guys knocked her down and told her that they're doing them a favor because the tuning exam aren't for kids and it ain't easy. Even we have failed three straight times. So I'm doing you guys pretty much a favor. I'm not letting you pass because you're not going to pass anyway. Most of the people died during the exam and most of them after the exam know that it's too hard so they quit being shinobis. So we've seen it all so I'm telling you guys you aren't ready. The captain of their team walked up to Lee and walked up to guy, guy's team and said if you pass this tuning exam, you know what the world is going to turn into? On missions, you will have to watch your comrades die, watch them suffer. That is what you have to go through. So, you guys aren't ready to take this tuning exam. We are just thinning out those that will fail anyway. And you, you guys, you're a bunch of failures. I agree. Sasuke voice cut through the silence of everyone listening to those idiot ninjas as Sasuke stared at both of them but you will let me pass through and also remove this surrounding genjutsu Sasuke said that demanding tone I am going to the third floor as he looked at them causing the crowd to mutter to themselves what is that guy talking about I don't know the people in the crowd talking even them, they doesn't know that they're on the 201 floor because it was all a genjutsu. This is a 201. Yeah, this is a 201 room. The 301 is upstairs. Ah, so you notice the man that Sasuke is talking to said, huh, as a sign that the door suddenly warped from 301 to 201. Then asked Sasuke, so you notice? Not really, Sasuke said. His eyes Darted to Sakura. Sakura, you must have noticed this first, right? Sakura responded, huh? Your analytical ability and genjutsu is the most improved on our team, Sasuke said. When he said that, he gave Sakura a big boost in courage. Naruto just shook his head and said, huh, best on our team. <laughs> He's saying this in his mind and just laughing to himself. Those two are the immortal chonins that always get stuck with guard duty because they never pass the test three years in a running. They're using transformation jutsu to weed out the weak genins from the exam. Sakura looked at him and said, of course, I noticed a while ago, she said. 
her eyes were now fulling and firing with light because this is the second floor, not the third. The spiky here one moved as he brought his foot to kick Sasuke. Not bad, but all you did was see to it. Now, let's see if you can get past me, he said. Naruto didn't move, his eyes were watching the crowd when he saw Mini Guy move, that is Rock Lee. He appeared between the middle of them and holding the boy kick with his hands and holding Sasuke's hand. Naruto's eyes narrowed very slightly, a taijutsu specialist. Watch with wide eyes, he's fast. He was able to see that kick and that punch and slide right between and stop the both of them. This is, she thought, he was completely different from the person who was getting knocked around earlier. He just didn't want to fight. Lee let out a sigh as he released the arm and the feet. When he heard a voice behind him, it was Neji. Neji walked up and said, what happened to the plan? You were the one who told us to not draw attention to ourselves. Lee then turned to look towards Sakura and Naruto was about to laugh because the way he was looking at her. Sakura looked at him and said, oh no. Lee started to walk towards Sakura. A small smile on his face as he greeted her. Hi, my name is Rock Lee. So yours is Sakura. Lee brought his hand up and stuck his thumb out in an okay position. His white teeth were shining. Let's go out together, he said. I will protect you till I die, he said. Sakura stared at him for a moment before she spoke. No way, you're lame. Lee then slumped into depression after hearing this. Hey, you, Neji said, facing Sasuke, what's your name? Sasuke looked at him and Sasuke scoffed. If you want to learn someone's name, you should give yearn first. Neji started to ask him question, you're a rookie right? Not giving Sasuke time to answer, how old are you? Sasuke scoffed again, I do not have to answer you. Sasuke and Neji turned from each other and began to walk away. Sasuke had a smirk on his face as if he was extremely excited to be here. Naruto shook his head and followed him. Sakura looked at her both teammates walking off. They both headed off to the one 301 room. So Sakura scurried behind them because she wanted to get away from Lee. But this is where I end it guys. If you want to see the next part of this, get this one past the like goal guys and comment down below and tell me what you think of this episode guys. But for now, I'm out. Peace.